In the 1970s, the first human-made probes flew to the outer reaches of the solar system and passed Jupiter. For the first time, scientists saw the largest and heaviest planet in the solar system up close. This marked the beginning of intensive exploration of the gas giant. In well over 40 years, scientists have discovered amazing details about this planet, and the discoveries continue unabated in the present. Only recently, a study was published that could mean the unimaginable for us on Earth. What it's about and what dangers emanate from Jupiter, you will learn in this video. But before we start with an overview of the gigantic successes of Jupiter exploration, we would like to invite you to subscribe to our channel and to activate the notification bell. That way, you'll never miss a new video again. If you like this post, we would be happy to receive a like. Jupiter and the Exploration of the Gas Giant Named after the king of the gods in Roman mythology, the gas giant is an enigmatic entity that wraps itself in colorful clouds and whose surface is dominated by severe winds. Due to its size and proximity to the Sun, Jupiter is one of the celestial bodies that can be easily observed from Earth with simple telescopes and even with the naked eye. Its marbled surface was already known to the astronomers of the late Middle Ages. Nevertheless, people knew very little about the planet until modern times. It was not until NASA sent the two pioneer probes into space in the 1970s that the planets became visible to all humans at close range for the first time. Almost 50 years later, we are already spoiled by high-resolution camera shots and video recordings. But in the 1970s, these blurry images were a milestone in the exploration of space and the gas giant Jupiter. Pioneer 10 radioed the first images of Jupiter on March 3, 1972, and the twin Pioneer 11 spacecraft reached the gas giant on December 2, 1974, before moving on to Saturn. In the late 1970s, NASA again launched a twin probe. Voyager 1 came as close as 173,000 miles to Jupiter in March 1979, taking nearly 19,000 images. Jupiter's largest moons, such as Io, were visible for the first time on these series of images. In 1979, Voyager 2 sent a veritable flood of data from Jupiter, discovered 22 new moons, and was the first probe to photograph the moon Europa at close range. Voyager 2 discovered a total of 22 moons and a ring system, similar to that of Saturn, only much thinner, during its flyby of Jupiter in 1979. By the 1990s, technology was much further along, and the Ulysses probe, which was actually on its way to the Sun, photographed the gas giant in the course of a swing-by maneuver from as close as 280,000 miles. Galileo was the first probe built exclusively to explore Jupiter. Galileo was able to photograph how the comet Shoemaker-Levy came too close to Jupiter in the mid-1990s and was simply torn apart by its gravitational forces. A lander launched by Galileo flew through Jupiter's atmosphere for the first time and measured wind speeds of over 300 miles per hour, as well as pressures and temperatures in its short lifetime. Then the probe was also crushed by Jupiter's gravitational field, just like that. During 14 years, Galileo collected more data than any probe before it and found evidence for water on the surfaces of the moons Callisto, Ganymede, and Europa. Strong volcanism was observed on Io, making it clear that many of Jupiter's moons are remarkably similar to Earth. In 2016, the follow-up mission reached the gas giant. The Juno spacecraft continued Galileo's work more than successfully, investigating, among other things, the Great Red Spot, observing Jupiter's moons, and is expected to continue until 2025. So, the discoveries around the largest planet in the solar system continue, and that's important, because Jupiter occupies a significant position within the star system. Until now, researchers assume that its gravity is responsible, among other things, for keeping all the other planets, and especially the inner rocky planets, which include Earth, on stable orbits. Jupiter also plays a crucial role in stabilizing the asteroid belt between it and Mars. Until now, 
Researchers assumed that Jupiter protects the inner part of the solar system like a gigantic protective shield. But it was here that researchers recently made a truly startling discovery. We'll get to that in just a moment. But first, let's take a look at why Jupiter almost became a sun and why, with its moons, it forms something like its own little solar system. Jupiter, a star prevented. In fact, it was Jupiter that shook the geocentric worldview in 1610. If these facts of early astronomy have not stuck with you from history lessons, we want to remind you again before Galileo's discoveries. Researchers and church people alike assume that the Earth is located in the center of creation. When Galileo Galilei pointed a telescope at Jupiter, this worldview was shaken for the first time. Because Galilei could recognize some of the moons of Jupiter, and they orbited Jupiter and not the Earth. From this, the astronomer concluded completely correctly that the Earth probably does not stand in the center of all being. Jupiter with its numerous moons really represents something like a mini solar system. Today, we know of 79 moons orbiting the gas giant. The smallest is Valetudo, with a diameter of less than a half mile, and the largest is Ganymede with a diameter of 3,270 miles. But Jupiter's peculiar relationship with the Sun goes even further. The gas giant is also called a prevented Sun in expert circles. Stars form from clouds of dust and gas, which are set into oscillation, and finally develop such enormous forces, under their own gravity, that elements begin to fuse. Today, we know that during these processes, two stars are born from some clouds. Then a so-called binary system is formed. If Jupiter had had only 80 times more mass, it would have become very probably a second sun directly after the formation of our sun. The factor 80 is actually a trifle in the cosmic scale, but enough to form not another star, but only a gigantic gas planet. In Jupiter's composition, the elements hydrogen and helium play a major role, similar to our sun. If Jupiter had been 80 times larger, its mass would have been sufficient to trigger the fusion of both elements. Under the influence of extreme heat and pressure, hydrogen atoms would then have fused with each other, producing helium. Incidentally, this process produces the light and heat so essential to life. Jupiter, however, did not become a sun, but a planet. These numbers, dates, and facts show how near and nevertheless how far certain processes in the universe can be. It's probable that our solar system would look completely different today if Jupiter had become a second star. But Jupiter has taken an important position in the star system in its own way. Just as the god embodies the patron of all other gods, Jupiter is also something like the father of all planets. The mass of the gas giant is so large that all other bodies of the solar system, no matter whether rock planet or gas planet, asteroid, comet, or lump of rubble would easily find place in Jupiter. And even then, not even half of its mass would be filled. So Jupiter is a real heavyweight, and exactly this property very probably made sure that the orbits of the other planets in the solar system were stabilized relatively early. After the formation of a star, the planets are formed from leftover particles of the star's birth. But at the beginning, these planets race relatively uncontrolled in confused orbits around their star. Thereby, there will be collisions, fusions, and annihilations. But Jupiter's gravity should have ensured peace and order in our system quite quickly. Today, researchers see this as one of the reasons why life was able to develop on Earth over a period of many millions of years. Although the planet is not considered as the official border between the inner and outer planets, this role is assigned to Saturn. Nevertheless, Jupiter performs a very special role on its post. Together with Mars, it appears to control the asteroid belt. This means that the gravity of the two planets ensures that some 600,000 objects ranging in size from a pebble-sized chunk of rock to asteroids miles in diameter remain at their posts and do not hurtle through the solar system as uncontrolled, deadly projectiles. At least that's what terrestrial astronomers have long assumed, until a recent and alarming study revealed something quite different. Jupiter, blessing or danger? Since Jupiter is heavier than twice the mass of all the other planets in the solar system, it truly possesses an unusual gravitational pull. Exactly this was what researchers thought was holding the bodies of the asteroid belt between the gas giant and Mars in place. 
The asteroid belt has several thousand objects whose size would be sufficient to set off an apocalypse on Earth, like the one that completely destroyed the world of the dinosaurs more than 60 million years ago. If Jupiter were the size of a soccer ball, Earth would be the size of a single grape. Because of its enormous gravity, Jupiter binds rocks to its gravity and prevents them from hurtling unimpeded towards Earth, Mars, Venus, or Mercury. But there is another effect of Jupiter's extreme gravitational pull that scientists are well aware of, even exploit to their advantage, but have so far completely underestimated with respect to asteroids and comets. Swing-by maneuvers are elements of spaceflight that use the gravitational pull of planets to accelerate or decelerate spacecraft. When a lighter spacecraft passes, close to a much heavier celestial body, the lighter body absorbs energy from the heavier one. This changes both the velocity and the direction of flight of the bodies that come close to the gravitationally stronger one. So this effect has now been shown to apply to some asteroids and comets that come close to Jupiter. Instead of protecting us from the impact of the projectiles, Jupiter's force can then turn into the opposite, and the gas giant virtually hurls the asteroids in our direction instead of protecting us from them. Jonathan Horner of the Open University in the British city of Milton Keynes found out in 2010 that Jupiter is protection and curse at the same time. What was most startling about this study was that the ratio of protection to threat was about 50-50. Claims of Jupiter's role in the protection of the Earth are to be evaluated as more than dubious. Jupiter protects us mainly from bodies from the asteroid belt between its own position and Mars. But asteroids and comets entering the interior from the outermost orbits of the solar system, and in particular the Kuiper belt, can experience enormous acceleration from the gas giant and become a deadly threat to us. Tell us what you think about more than 40 years of Jupiter exploration and its role in the asteroid threat. We welcome your contributions and your discussions in the comments and hope to see you back at Simply Space soon.